I'm back from holiday. I'm really sorry I didn't post a video last week, but I'll come at you with a double video this week. Um, I basically was on my long run this morning. I did 30K. It was miserable in the rain and I got absolutely covered in mud. Um, and I wish I was back in Spain, but a thought came into my head and I was like, let's film a 10 things I wish I knew when I started running. So that's the video for today. And then I'm running the big half on Sunday. Uh, so I'm gonna film a little race vlog for that. That's gonna be a really exciting race, but we don't need to go into that now. Um, but anyway, I'm a little bit dead. I've been sitting on the sofa watching Made in Chelsea, but let's go into the 10 things I wish I knew when I started running, loads of things I've learned along the way in my running, and loads of like trainer recommendations and just things that you can't really Google. Um, but I'm excited, things I love talking about, so let's get into this. Oh my god, okay, this is my favourite thing to talk about, and I could talk about it for so long and probably do an entire YouTube video on it, but Oh, it won't take up too much time. I just went to my little trainer cabinet, which is oh, the favorite bit about my flat. Um, I've got an insanely ridiculous amount of trainers, so I've just selected a few. First thing I wanted to say is, you don't need a million pairs of trainers, but I do think two pairs of trainers are ideal an easy running pair of trainers and a quicker running pair of trainers. Now, I'm not an expert on shoes, but carbon plated shoes do help. They're, there's like a stat which is like they make you 4% quicker or something, like which is insane. I don't do any speed work not in my carbon plated shoes, but everything else I do is in easy running trainers. A pet hate of mine is seeing, oh, I, did, I saw it this weekend at the airport, just a guy walking around in like Nike 200 and silly amount of money vapor flies, just like as his daily commuting trainer. And I'm just like, ah, it hurts me. Um, definitely don't overwear your carbon plated shoes. They put so much stress on your carbs, which in turn is gonna, you know, affect your Achilles. It, Lead, could lead to shin splints. So many injuries, so many new runners get. Flat, non carbon plated, easy running shoes make you stronger. So my favourite easy running shoe, I think, has to be the New Balance Fresh Foam 1080s. I have different colour variations of these. This is actually the London Marathon one from 2022, but they're just super foamy and springy. They're my intermediate trainers, which you do not need, but I wanted to mention are the Adidas Boston 11s, I think these are. I also have the 10s and I'd love 12s. The reason I wanted to mention these is because if you didn't want to buy two pairs of shoes, these do everything for me. Um, I can do sessions in these and I can do my easy running. I believe there's like carbon rods in them, so they do have a little bit of like push off, um, but not full on carbon plated shoes. So I wear them when I do steady running, I wear them when I'm feeling really lazy on an easy long run and need that little oomph. Um, but I love these. People do say they're a bit like running in clogs, a bit like cardboard, but you do get used to them. I've heard the Adidas Boston 12s, the upgrade from these are like solve that issue and they are like a, an amazing all round shoe. So if you're gonna get one pair of shoes, love these. I also do gym in these New Balance by the way. Um, and then I couldn't decide for my favorite carbon plated race shoe. So I bought Three pairs of my favourites. Ah! So, where should we start? These are the Adidas Pro 3s. Now, I didn't used to like them. Then I've been wearing them more and more, and now I really like them. One thing I'd say, this back bit, I don't think anyone knows whether they should be up or down. 
I believe they should be down. They caused me blisters the first time, but I think that's because I had it up. So yeah, pull those down. Um, they are really, really springy. Loads of like forefront propulsion. Like, can you see here it feels really bouncy, which I really like. But I've still been going back to the classic Vaporfly. These are actually the Vaporfly 3s. I still think I'm going to run the big half in these on Sunday just because I'm a creature of habit. But I really, really don't have a preference between these Adidas Pro 3s and then my half marathon PB is in the A6 Meta Speed Skies. I have three different pairs of these, which does say a lot. They are super bouncy like the whole way along. I can fit like my whole hand underneath my toe, like they rock you forwards. I love these. For longer like marathons and things, I think these are insane. Like they are they are gonna be so supportive. I think for beginners, I'd say these are the best marathon shoes, and I'm not even gonna lie. These are the least supportive, but if you're sprinting a marathon, like I'll be trying to do, not legit sprinting, but it, I won't actually be in these for very long, hopefully just over two and a half hours. Ah! So I think you can get away with it for these. These do hurt my calves quite a lot, but I think that's because they're so bouncy and so many races have been won in these recently. I just need to wear them a bit more. But yeah, trainers, next thing. Let's talk about fueling. I feel like I'm gonna miss so many things out in this video, but I just don't wanna be speaking for hours. So I'm just talking about my favorite things. But if you want specific videos on like a topic I cover, please just let me know. Um, most of my marathon training and fueling is using the Morton um, Hydro Sports drink mix. So this is basically a carb in liquid form. So you just mix it in your bottles with water. This is the 160, then there's the 320, which is just, it's exactly the same, but double the amount. Um, you need to aim to get in about 40 to 50 grams of carbs an hour. That's what I aim for anyway. So that is, I make a bottle up, so I drink a third after, say like 20 minutes, a third 20 minutes later, and then a third by the end of the hour kind of thing. Um, you need to practice it. Your stomach is a muscle like any other muscle in your body, so you need to train it. Um, I know people leave it to race day, and there's no point in doing all the training if your stomach's just gonna let you down. So it's worth doing it throughout your block. Saying that, in training in a block, if I don't have someone to pass me a bottle, which I'm lucky enough to get in races, I know most people don't, um, I do use the Morton gels. They are the easiest that I find on my stomach. Or I have found the SIS Science and Sport Beta Fuel Blocks. These are like sweets. I'm obsessed with these. I would have them as snacks but I know it's probably not very good for me. Uh, but I really look forward to taking them, which helps me break up a run, because I'm like, oh, five minutes time, I get to have another sweetie. Um, that sounds ridiculous, but so good, so good. Um, I've heard the beta fuel from Science and Sports is like the same ingredients list as Morton, so it should be as easy on your stomach, because they also have these in gel form. Um, but I haven't had great experiences with goo, or high five. So I'd stick to Science and Sport or Morton, but you'd have to take out a bank loan for Morton, which you don't need to do. These are great. Okay, now talking about undies and socks. These are things I didn't know about when I started running. If you're gonna wear a normal sock, you're basically just going to get blisters. Your shoes won't fit correctly and your feet will get so wet and they move around like in your shoe. They're thick and they're cotton. So just get yourself some running socks. 
I genuinely think the best socks are the Power Stride socks from Lululemon. Um, they are really thin and they're not cotton. I don't think you can really see because they're fluorescent. Um, they also look sick. Uh, they're breathable and they just fit your foot so well. They have a band around your forefoot and under your arch which holds them in place and they, they just fit. Um, I really think you should get these. The worst socks, which I actually don't have, are those double layered socks, if you know what I mean. Like there's almost two layers and you can kind of unattach them. That just moves and it's just going to cause friction and a blister. And that your feet are gonna get so hot. Like your feet swell when you run anyway. So don't get those, don't get those. Lastly, underwear. I have this hilarious story from my first marathon where I wore inappropriate little pants and basically my bum crack was like grated like with the cheese wire it was bleeding i had to put baby oil on my bum for like weeks and it looked like a crispy cream donut then i discovered i don't want to show my under tea clothes they're clean Runderwear, um which i rate so much uh obviously not sponsored uh just called Runderwear. um this is a thong and it's so comfy, it never caused me a single issue. I run a lot in them, and I also run a lot in the Lululemon seamless thongs because they're seamless and they don't dig in anywhere and they feel like butter on my skin. Um, yeah, I've chafed everywhere, literally everywhere, so thinking about being practical. Only recently have I like started thinking practically. Like, I went to a shoe shop the other day and I was like, I just need comfy comfy sandals i'm fed up with all my silly little shoes that cause me blisters like help <laughs> okay a bit more of a serious one without showing you anything i wish someone had told me at the beginning it gets easier because if you told me when i started running which still wasn't that long ago that i was that i'd be doing like sessions that i'm doing now i wouldn't have believed you like in a million years the key is consistency like you've got to stay consistent um but you've also got to enjoy it the more you enjoy it the easier it gets and the easier it is to stay consistent so just keep running with a smile on your face um it's it's a joy to be able to run like we're lucky that we can spend our days doing that all i can say is start small and don't rush it there is no need to be greedy just work your way up slowly in the distances and the pace ignore what everybody else is doing and as i say it it does get easier it does get easier um you'll stop aching as much after runs your recovery will end up being quicker the more efficient your body gets you've just got to stick at it and on that next point you need to track your progress tracking your progress helps you just look back and see how far you've come. I have a training journal, which I hand write in, and it's the best thing in the world. And I can't tell you too much about it, but that's super exciting. And Strava has a similar feature where you can search in your activities for runs. So I did four by 5K, that was the session I did last week. And I just searched into my Strava to see how I did the last time I did that session and it blew my mind that I did it literally exactly a year ago on the day I ran that and I could see my progress and how much quicker this time the session was and at the time after I finished the run like last week uh, I wasn't sure how to feel about it whether it was good or not and then reflecting on it and comparing it to my last time I did it oh my god like I was overcome with joy um Definitely, it keeps you motivated as well, tracking your progress. Um, and just looking back and being like, I never used to be able to run at that pace and now I'm almost comfortable. Also, it almost helps manifest. Like, I'm not a crystal shagger, whatever they're called, but I think if you write down your aims and if you write down what you want to achieve or what you have achieved, you're basically bringing it into the universe and it goes into your head. Um, which again, oh, I'm, on a, I'm on a roll. You would have thought I'd plan this. Um, it helps you set intentions for the next workout. So that's gonna be my next point now. I wish 
someone had told me to stop doing junk miles or at least what junk miles were I was just running most days oh, whenever I could be bothered same pace same route everything and it was probably a little bit too fast to be an easy pace um, and probably a little bit too slow to be doing anything other than fatiguing me sessions are gonna help you improve your running so much and you've just got to realize that no one actually cares and no one's watching you when you feel a bit of an idiot like sprinting around Battersea Park when people are just like having a leisurely coffee and walking their dogs um, tracking your progress and seeing what this what you did in the last time you did that session and then what you're hoping to do if you do that session again that is going to give you your intention for that workout so i want to hit these paces whenever i don't have a plan and i go out on a run is when it's a rubbish session and i give up far too soon you need a training plan and i'm Obviously, I'm a huge advocate being a running coach myself, but a coach is so helpful. Um, it means you don't have to think, and they know you or, and your running ability almost better than you know yourself. So if they believe you're capable of that, you've got to go do it, and a running coach or plan keeps you accountable for that. Wait, can you see my rucksack? I feel like Dora the Explorer. Okay. <laughs> Gadgets. I wanted to talk about gadgets because people always say running is a really simple sport and all you need is your body and trainers. The market is mental at the moment. Everybody trying to sell everybody everything. I have the recovery boots. I have the massage gun. I do think they're good. I don't know how much of it is placebo. Obviously, I rate a massage so much, but I can't tell you the last time I used this. It is good, but I do rely on an actual massage more. This is good though. I would say if you're going to invest in anything, get a massage gun. Some are actually pretty affordable as well. Um, this is the Theragun. Um, I use it when my legs are absolutely battered, but that doesn't happen that often, or like if they're completely dead and I've got a race. Then these are the Myo Master compression boots. I don't know if you've seen, let me show you, let me show you. Oh. <laughs> okay, wait. They are boots you put on your legs and they compress your muscles to promote blood flow to help you recover quicker. I've used them quite a bit, but they're not like, you don't need them. I use them because I have them. I don't know if they do that much. I do think a massage does more. Maybe they do the like little 1% extra. They hurt my bunions. Um, so they get really tight on your feet um, I guess they're good when I'm like working I have them on very occasionally I used to use them more I don't use them very much anymore one thing I use all the time every single day I would just sit there like on a date night and I'd just be like oh look at my watch like it's my phone honestly I have the Coros Pace 3 it's actually new I think this is the best running watch you can get. And I know this sounds like an ad. It's not. Um, I had the Chorus Pace 2 before. And I had a Garmin before that. And I had a Woohoo before that. And I had a Fitbit before that. So I've tried quite a few. I don't want to slag any brands off. But I just want to tell you guys like what you should be spending your money on. Woohoo! was the worst gps i've tried of any of them fitbits and apple watch i wouldn't even bother with um garmin i liked then i got coros it takes a little bit of getting used to the chorus pace 2 is the one i used to have but i used to get a little bit annoyed that i couldn't play music through it and i couldn't pay through it um and you had to twist a little wheel to unblock but 
I loved Coros because it gave me more data and more understandable data than Gar Garmin. The Coros Pace 3 has solved all of that and genuinely I think it's the best watch on the market. You don't have to do the weird twisty unlock anymore. You can play music through it. It's got like navigation so you can load a, a, a route onto your watch. You literally don't need your phone um, because I hate running with bags or like belts or water or anything in my hands. I don't like it or on my body. Um, so sometimes I don't even bring a phone. And it's got all the data and it found GPS so quickly. So I do think if you're gonna get a running watch, get the Coros Pace 3. Um, also, it links to my training peaks, which is where my training plan is on. And so when I just go to click start a workout, it's already loaded up. So if I'm doing like a track session in the park or intervals, I don't have to keep looking at my watch. Like it will just count down the reps for me. And it tells what pace I should be running at, which is just a game changer. Um, love, love. Okay, I've lost count of how many points we're on, but I want to talk about recovery now and how when I started running, I was kind of on autopilot and I was just doing the plan like it was gospel. You need to recover. Like, it's literally the most important bit. Like, you're not going to perform without. Being a full-time runner now, I've realised that I'm not just paid to run well, I'm paid to recover well, I'm paid to eat well. Like, I've got to be on my top form all the time. Um, I had a bit of a shocking session last week. I tried to do three by 10K, uh, which is my least favorite session ever. And it didn't go well because I tried to do two sessions in three days, which is just so silly. Don't do that. <laughs> um, at least I did have a rest day where I did like nothing in between. Um, but you need fresh legs to be able to perform. The things, the, the small minute details I'm gonna go into for recovery, I'll do quickly. Protein, really, really important. Get your protein in straight after a hard workout, even if you're not hungry, because when you push your muscles, they tear, they tear, and they need to rebuild stronger in order for you to get quicker. If you don't eat after a workout, like, your muscles go into like disrepair. Get your protein in because you need to build back stronger. Then I'm gonna talk about sleep. Sleep is so important. Now I don't have a corporate job. I don't do more running. I just do better running because I can recover more. Sleep is so good. These, I use these. Yeah, maybe. Another Pure Sport Unwind Deep Sleep New Tropics. I do sleep really well. Who knows if it's completely down to this. They're just capsules and I take two a night like just before bed. Um, but these are my favorite supplements that I take to be honest. Another Pure Sport product is the Muscle Joint Balm. It's the, is it gonna load? The CBD Muscle Joint Balm. This is really good and I do use it before a session. I don't, I use it basically when, I've got a big session the next day and my calves are quite tight. They have a um, like gua sha knife and you like work it into your muscles. Of course, the actual art of massaging into your muscles is going to do something, which I'm sure is a lot of like the benefits. But this is CBD and it's meant to reduce inflammation. So it should make you ache less and recover quicker. Um, I do use it regularly. It's the best pure spot product they have if you're going to spend your money on any pure spot product get the muscle and joint balm it's it's actually really good and put it in the fridge um if you're like in summer because it just feels so nice and cooling okay i think i'm on to the last few points i want to talk about second to last then i wanted someone to tell me races don't have to be scary i worked myself up so much uh, like last year, before races, before hard sessions. Um, I'd think about the session coming up for so long and it'd just play on my mind and I'd get really nervous. And I just remember one time going out for a session, getting into the park, basically just crying and almost having a panic attack and having to turn around and go home. Whereas if I hadn't put all that pressure on me, I could have 
just gone out, started easy, started slow, uh, and worked my way up and probably felt great by the end. Not every race has to be a PB. That took me a lot of time and people telling me to realize that. Um, it is impossible to be peak fitness all the time. So much of running is, it, it's not linear. It's, you can't, you have to have off periods, you have to have deloads, you have to have on seasons, off seasons. Two steps forward, one step back is what everybody says. I was talking to a really good friend of mine, Holly, uh, Holly Archer, I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, but she was really scared to get back on racing because she was like, people are gonna be watching me and I'm, I've been coming back from injury and I don't think, I don't want people to think like, I'm not as fit as I was. Um, there is no point in just waiting to be your peak fitness before getting on a race start line. Like your training benefit you're gonna get from that race is gonna be so much more than if you just went for a run by yourself because you've got the competitiveness. Like it's fun, if anything. Um, and you can also practice like your race day tactics. And the more you do, the better you get at it. Like you learn so much from your races. What went well, what didn't go well. And you can implement that to your next race. Finally. I wanted to talk about mantras and mental toughness. <sighs> Running is never not going to hurt, no matter how fit you are, a marathon is going to hurt. But that is one of the things I love about marathon running. I am just as inspired by the people who are running six hour marathons than Kipchoge running a two hour marathon because we're all just running the fastest we can and the best race we can. Um, I think about some of the people I coach when I run and I'm like, the least I can do is run well for them. Like they are working their socks off uh, somewhere in the field. And so I better beat so many people. I think it's like 110 um, runners from Best Athletics doing the big half on Sunday. So just the thought of them also like, really digging deep is gonna motivate me so much. But the mantras I wanted to talk about, running is a mental sport, like you have got to train your brain. You've got to visualize yourself on that start line and crossing that finish line um, to really believe it's possible. I think about it when I go to sleep. I know that's silly, but I just, I just try and believe it's possible. The more, like it is possible, like I'm gonna smash Berlin. I will, I will, I will. I like, I will, I will, I will. Um, the things I think about when I'm running, when the going gets tough is, well, this is silly, because I think it's something my mum said. When the going gets tough, the tough gets going. You've just got to hold on, you've got to dig deep, and you've got to decide you really, really want it at that point. Um, also remember, pain and like mental suffering goes in waves if you think about any run you've been on you'll be like oh, i can't do this I can't do this and then like 10 20 per kilometer on you suddenly feel great again you have like a second wind so just remember that will come try to squash any negative thoughts you have as much as you can in a race like that is wasted energy just think positively like I am going to do this, I am going to finish it. Don't for one second think you can't. Um, I always think I'm strong, I'm tough, I've done the training, I'm in control. I don't know what that is, but I'm always, like on training runs, I'm like, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm in control. It's not over until I decide it's over. Your body can do so much more than your mind thinks it can. So it'll try and like play these games on you, but your body is like incredible, especially a woman's body being biased, but like it can do so much. It can get you through the next hour of a run. Like just believe you can do it, you can do it, and it will be over. The further you run, the less you've got to run. Okay, is that it? Oh, I want to go into so much more, but I think that's enough for today's video. I don't even know how long it's going to be. I can go into any of these in more detail, but um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. See a lot of you on Sunday, I hope, at the big half. And then Berlin Marathon is like three weeks away. Ah! Okay, bye.